So when you say, uh, Comrade Trump, will you mean it like in the communist sense? Are you anti-communist too? Right. I we think Putin probably has something on Trump. Do you think he has something on Trump? I think so. Absolutely. I'm not justifying uh, Syria, the involvement, but what do you think about, though, uh, now he's kind of going against Putin in a way, right? Because well, Putin is threatening is. war. Right, but I think a lot of this happened long before the election. Thank you. Representative I think uh, he and Putin... Uh, have had a uh, some deals going on, and uh, what what he's just done as far as not gone along with the new sanctions is just another uh, stepping stone towards uh, you know his involvement with with, with Russia. So you could say it could be a front to show that he doesn't have involvement with Russia, so he's kind of instigating. Well, oh, I think front. that's what it is. What do you think? That's Don the Con. <laughs> that's that's this guy right Don here. Don the Con. Okay. Right. What does the other side of your sign say? Impeach and remove Don the Con. <laughs> what can I say? So here, uh, you're at this uh, rally here. What are you advocating for or against? I'm against Trump. You're against Trump. I'm against Pruitt. I'm against about 90% of his cabinet. I'm very much against his tax, this whole tax package that they that they passed. What about the tax package? Package? Are you? Uh, I'm going to be paying more taxes next year. It's not going to help. I think the average person. It's going to help. Uh, you know, the wealthy, uh, the people that are already rich. Uh, and uh, it's very unfair. I'm I'm very disappointed with the Republican Party. This is going against everything that the Republican Party has stood for for the last 30 years. And and it's like happy, they've got a they've, they've done a complete 180 degrees. 180 degrees. Well, you could say that, um, like in a way, like if a thief tells you ahead of time, I'm going to come and take your money. You, you have a year to hide your money, right? So, like the, you could say the rich, then when they pass legislation that says like we're going to increase taxes one way or another, they're going to hide the money overseas. They're finding, going to find loopholes. But anyways, government still needs their money, so they're going to still going to take it from someone. That's generally the middle class, uh, the lower class that they're going to take that from. Uh, but how much money do you think? Uh, do you know? that the one percent pays in taxes do you know that they probably pay less than i do probably pay substantially less than i do actually if they pay anything they do pay they pay uh the, even the one percent pays 43 percent of all taxes all. Okay. yeah it's a top 20 percent pay 69 percent of all taxes so they pay a lot um it's factually they pay a lot um but I'm, but I'm not here to say like how much we should take from them at all i'm saying like if you if you find that uh, tax breaks can benefit, uh, but you're saying this benefits. Then don't you think the greatest tax break that could benefit the middle class and lower class is maybe 100% uh, tax break? <laughs> well, that would be great. That would be great, wouldn't well, it? The, the thing is, though, is that we do have to pay for infrastructure and, and our military and, every, and everything else. I mean, taxes, we do have to pay taxes. That, that's true. Uh, we don't have a I think, choice, though. I think you, we don't. If right. we want to, if we want to be, you know, who we are in the world, people have to pay for something. It's nothing's for free. Do you think these things, though, that you described that the government is uh, doing, that we can provide ourselves in the market? You saw the Bundy Ranch and people. There was a voluntary militia that went out there, stood in the face of uh, what we would describe government tyranny, and they backed down. Right? I think these things that we give too much. Uh, uh, sake towards the government thinking that they could provide all our solutions, all our problems, but we could find in our own community voluntarily without that threat of a gun of taking our money through taxes, that we could accomplish a lot more efficiently than handing our money to bureaucrats and politicians who have no idea how to do and run any of these things themselves. They're not in the military. They don't send their sons, their sons to public schools or any of that matter. But what do you think about then abolishing taxation and doing these things ourselves, voluntary, just like uh, Americans did back in 1776. There wasn't any of that government in in our lives, and they went to war for even one percent tax. Yeah, but it, it, I think it's, it's a little unfair to, to compare today uh, with 1776. The world uh, is a hell of a lot more com complex right now, uh, and the fact is, you know, nobody likes to pay taxes. They're kind of a necessary evil, whether you like it or not. And and as far as government intervention, I mean. You know, there's kind of a fine line on that. There's a lot of gray area in there, okay? Uh, so, if you want to get talk about a very specific thing, that's one thing, but the, the paint is 
this broad picture about yeah. there's too much government this or, or not enough government. Yeah, that's that's not really a, 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 a I think a fair example. What do you feel that you need government for in your life? That you can't provide yourself or ask for your community for you know for help. I want I want I want my government to protect me from big business from from businesses. Big big businesses. The big, the big like the Koch brothers. The Koch brothers. You're right, and everything that they uh, are involved with. What are they involved with? Well, for one, one thing, I went to George Mason University. So did my wife and my daughter is in there right now. Uh, when I've read uh, and found out that Koch brothers are very much involved with the School of Economics and controlling it, and, 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 and insofar as who gets hired on as a, as a professor and everything else. Um, and then George Mason calls me up and asks me as an alumni for a donation. I said no. I won't support them, not as long as they have that connection with the Koch brothers. Right. Also, look at the law school. You still have another another connection there with the Koch brothers. Um, America too, so a scholarship award they have there as well. Um, okay, so what about the Koch brothers? Have they uh, intruded in your life to make you so fearful that you need like people like Bernie Sanders or the government uh, to save you from the Koch brothers? I don't know if Bernie's going to save me from the He's also a comrade, you know, he had a communist flag in his He's a socialist, office. Yeah. and I don't like it when I see him being depicted as a Democrat. Right. No, he isn't. No, he's, he's a, a socialist. Communist. He's a socialist. Yeah. Well, I don't know about communist, socialist, we could have a long discussion yeah, yeah, about yeah. that. But, All right. No. <laughs> so then, would you consider yourself... Uh, would you consider then you said taxation is a necessary evil? You acknowledge that. Uh, would you consider then also theft then? Because you have no consent. And when you define theft as taking someone's property without their consent, you have no contractual relations with government. You have no, because the thing is, you have to be also to withdraw your consent Thank without you, consequences. And you can't do that when the IRS comes knocking on your door when you haven't paid, right? That's true. That, that, that's true. Right. Would you, cons would you consider it, call it as what it is then, theft? Yeah. Well. I guess it depends what kind of country you want to live in. I mean, let's face it, you can go to, <clears throat> let's say you want to move to a place that doesn't have as much as much state taxes, okay? All right, okay, you've got a couple of kids and maybe one of them is a uh, special education, requires special education. Do you think, what kind of special education courses do you think you receive in places like Kentucky and Arkansas and some of these other states versus where I live, Fairfax County? I happen to have a child that, that receives uh, uh, special ed, and I was sure glad I lived where I did. We do pay a lot of taxes, but I feel, but I feel we get our we get our money's worth. This is this is the point. This is I think this is what it, what it comes down to. I don't mind paying for it, but, but I want to see I want to see you know some some positive results. Don't you think then there's like nearly half your income now though, is, is taken away? Fairfax County, yeah, one of the heaviest tax uh, counties in the region. But don't you think nearly half your money back in your hand, you can spend much more money directly, more efficiently, not eaten up by the bureaucracy of government to fund more of these things that you want? Well, uh, you know, the only thing about living in Fairfax County that I think is unfair is that the uh, the uh, state of Virginia. Uh, takes a hell of a lot of our taxes. Northern Virginia, right. Fairfax, yep. we support the rest of the state. Right. Okay. I think it was, I think the last time I heard this was for every dollar we pay, Fairfax County gets a quarter back. Right. Everything right? goes to everywhere else in Virginia, like Norfolk. What do you think about, uh, there's always been talks of a secessionist movement of Northern Virginia seceding from the rest because of that, right? No, no. <laughs> what did you want? I'll tell you something. Right? Back, back in another, in another life, when I, when I worked in government, okay, I had to work with the Virginia Supreme Court and uh, and their staff, and now, now most of these guys were great. I say guys, but men and women, they were really professionals. They were great. But I ran into a few people. I actually had somebody one time just point blank say to me, you all that live in Northern Virginia want everything. And I was, I was taken back by this. I was, I was shocked that somebody would actually say that to me, to my face. And I'm thinking, geez, you know, you guys built all these interstate highways around Richmond 
Because I remember all those things being built right. when they didn't yeah. have the population. Right. And there, there's my taxes going to the Russ that you'll never use. Right. 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 I have to leave because i got to find my wife. Okay, okay. Oh, one, last nice one last question. One last question. Don't you think, the, are you a pro-gun? I am a pro-gun. Yes. I'm not a... Good. I'm not on a. I'm not. Per, I'm not particularly an assault rifle kind of guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you want, if you like assault rifles, go on down to the recruiting station and sign up for the infantry. You get to shoot all you want. To. Okay. And that's that's kind of where I stand. That's where you stand. Okay. But you wouldn't advocate government to take away over people's guns, though, right? That's confiscation. That's why well, we went to war in 1776. Well, I, you know, when it comes to that, I was a history major. I did my undergraduate and graduate work in, in history and I never listened to what the NRA said I did my own research right. on our forefathers there's no doubt they wanted a armed population right there's no if ands or buts about it whether it's relative today or not I say well look at Russia or is their population armed no so you know it's still I think it still is a, is a relevant uh, uh, so a course of action, I think, you know. But you look at England. Gun confiscation leads to now knife confiscations. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's a England, I, I wondered what, you know, the people in England, I like them. I like people in Australia. But I, I wonder what happened over there in both those countries right. on that. I, I don't know. Right, right. It's hard to say. Well, that's common on Emotional, taxes. emotional right. things. So. My last comment on taxes that um, it's interesting. People who are anti-gun and they are for taxes have to realize that they're actually pro-guns because you need guns to take people's taxes. Because what happens if you don't give it to the IRS, they'll fine you. If you don't pay that fine, men with guns will come to your door and send you to a cage, right? That's true. That's true. That's true. Well, thank you so much for uh, having this conversation. <laughs>